This is calculus concept exam review for concepts number four through eight. In problem number one, we're told that the limit as x approaches negative five of f of x is two. And the limit as x approaches negative five of g of x is negative four. And we're asked to find the limit as x approaches negative five of f of x minus g of x. What we need to understand here is that this limit of f of x minus g of x is exactly the same according to the limit laws as the limit as x approaches negative 5 of f of x minus the limit as x approaches negative 5 of g of x which in our case is just 2 minus negative 4 or 6 Number two is a similar problem. They tell us that the limit as x approaches a negative one of f of x is negative five, and the limit as x approaches negative one of g of x is negative eight, and ask us to find the limit as x approaches negative one of negative five times f of x minus six times g of x all over negative six plus g of x. Well, this will equal, let's see, negative five, times the f of x limit is negative 5 minus 6 times the g of x limit is negative 8 all over negative 6 plus uh, negative 8 would be minus 8 that equals let's see 25 plus 48 over negative 14 so our final answer is negative 73 fourteenths that's it for one and two. Number three is an interesting question. They want us to uh, sketch a possible graph. So there's going to be more than one right answer here. A possible graph uh, of a function f that has the following properties. f of four has to exist. So we need to make sure we show a point at four. But the limit as x approaches negative three of f of x does not exist. So we have to make sure there's something going on goofy at negative three so there is no limit. So let's start there. Let's start with something goofy at negative 3 so there is no limit. So if I have an open circle here and the graph headed this way and if I, um, let's just do another open circle here and the graph headed the other way. I don't have a limit at negative 3 because the limit from the left and the limit from the right are not the same. Now I just have to make sure that I do have a value at 4. So let's go 1, 2, 3. Let's go ahead and indicate that 4 would be here and we'll make sure that we have a dot at 4 or at least the graph passes smoothly through 4. There we go. We have a function that exists at f of 4. f of 4 exists but there's no limit at negative 3. Number 4 we're doing limits um, involving infinity and on number 4 we notice that x is going to infinity here we have uh, same degree in the numerator and the denominator we have x cubed and x cubed so as x goes to infinity we're taught here to look at just the leading coefficients which are 4 and negative 1 and our limit would be the same as 4 divided by negative 1 which is negative 4 basically what happens is is infinity is so large that the rest of this kind of becomes insignificant and we're just going to have 4 times a really large number divided by negative 1 times a really large number. And as that number gets larger and larger and larger, we're approaching uh, negative 4. Let's follow up this uh, concept on number 5. When I look at number 5, I see that I have an x to the first power being the largest power in the denominator. And I have an x to the half power being the largest power in the numerator. Therefore, the denominator has the larger power. And when that happens, this uh, goes to zero because I'm taking a number and dividing it by a very, very large number. Uh, since x is going to be bigger than root x, it's going to get larger faster than root x. And as, in, as we get uh, larger and larger numbers as we approach out to infinity, plugged in here, we're going to be dividing by larger numbers and approaching zero. Number six, we're going to try to uh, insert a negative two from the left. If I insert a negative 2 from the left, that's a number like 1.999, or negative 2 from the left. 
let's see, that's a number like uh, negative 2.00001. That's to the left of negative 2. If I put that in here, I'm going to get a really small negative number in the denominator. So if I take 1 and divide by a really small number, it's going to give me a huge number. If I divide by a really small negative number, it's going to give me a huge negative number. So the smaller that is, or the closer we get to negative 2, the closer we're going to get a value towards negative infinity. Or we're going to negative infinity. Number 7, as we approach from the right, that would be plugging in a number like negative 1.9. 999 nine, just to the right of negative 2. If I put that in and add 2 to it, I'm going to get a very small positive number. And following the same reason, 1 divided by a very small positive number is going to be headed towards positive infinity. So there's concept 6. Okay, number 8. We're told that the volume equals s cubed describes the volume of a cube. The cube is v in terms of cubic inches, whose length, width, and height are uh, measure s inches. Find the instantaneous rate of change of the volume with respect to s when s equals 9. Indicate units of measure, so the units of measure we're interested in here. Well, if we're looking for instantaneous rate of change, we're looking for a derivative. Remember, derivative is a rate of change, and instantaneous uh, derivatives that we can find. So v prime, or the derivative of v, should be 3s squared. Let's write that again. That came out a little goofy looking. Equals 3s squared. When s is 9, v prime of 9 equals 3 times 9 squared, or 81 times 3. 81 times 3 is um, 243. So the volume is 243. Now we know this is cubic inches, but cubic inches per what? 243 cubic inches per something, right? Because this has to be a rate. Well, what's increasing here? That what's increasing is the length of the side. And what is the length of the side measured in? It's measured in inches. So as the, the length of the side approaches 9 inches, or actually gets to 9 inches, the instantaneous rate of change is 243 cubic inches per inch. Okay, Volume is measured in cubic inches. The length of the side are measured in inches. Number 9 looks a little more straightforward here. We just asked to find the equation of a tangent line to the graph of y equals x squared minus x at the point uh, negative 4 comma 20. We've done a few of these, quite a few of these in homework. Um, so we're doing a line. We know that um, to write an equation of a line, we need a slope and we need a point. They gave us a point. To find the slope, we're going to use a little bit of calculus to find a derivative. So y prime is equal to what 2x minus 1. And then at the point negative 4, we have a slope of, boy, that pen needs to be picked up a little higher, doesn't it? We have a slope of 2 times negative 4 minus 1, or negative 9. So I have a slope of negative 9. So the equation of the tangent line, uh, we'll start that off with y equals negative 9x plus some unknown b value, and I'm going to plug in the point to find the b value. So 20 goes in for y, and negative 4 goes in for x. 20 equals uh, 36 plus b. b is going to be negative 16. So my final answer here is y equals, my slope is negative 9x, and then my intercept is negative 16. Done. Concept, concept 8 here, derivatives. We're just finding the derivative at the point. So the first thing we need is a derivative. So let's find the derivative of f of x. The negative 8 will zero out, and the negative x squared will give me a negative 2x. 
And if I want the derivative at x equals 5, I just find f prime of 5. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. So this derivative is negative 10. For number 11, we had better make some space here on number 11 because we don't necessarily know how to deal with this kind yet. So we'll use have to use the sledgehammer here on number 11. We're not quite. Um, so the derivative here, f prime of x, will equal the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h, which would be um, root a plus h plus 3 minus f of a, which is root a plus 3 all divided by h. Let's go ahead and multiply by a conjugate here so we can see if we can uh, get something that we can evaluate. Our conjugate is root a plus h plus 3 plus root a plus h3, excuse me, over the same thing, a plus h plus 3 plus root a plus h. Go ahead and multiply here. So my derivative equals the limit as h approaches 0 of root a plus h plus 3 times root a plus h plus 3 is just a plus h plus 3 minus a plus h plus 3. Remember when you multiply uh, conjugates you just get a squared minus b squared. In the denominator we just have h times root a plus h plus 3 plus root a plus 3. The numerator, a minus a is going to zero out, and 3 minus 3 is going to zero out. That's just going to leave us h, and that h is going to reduce with the h in the denominator. So after doing all that, we get that f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over root a plus h plus 3 plus root a plus a, a plus 3. When I insert 0 for h, we're going to zero out this term right here. I was meant to do that in red. We're going to zero out that h right there. And the result would be running out of room toward the bottom, so we'll write it over here. 1 over 2 root a plus 3. But this isn't what we were asked for. Remember, we're asked to find it out of specific points. We're asked to find what this equals at 1. So let me shift colors here and uh, plug in 1. Actually, let's go with, uh, let's just go with red. f prime of 1 is equal to 1 over 2 root 1 plus 3. Well, 1 plus 3 is 4. The square root of that is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, so it's 1 fourth. So my final answer here is 1 fourth. And we're done with that.